forget about this. I won't come after you. Make it sound like you're doing me a favour. I am. You won't hurt me because you don't want to hurt yourself. A couple of points. I don't need to get hurt though, do I? I mean, look at this. Woohoo! Not tied up, am I? I could bail out whenever I want. In fact, I could pull up now and set this rolling down a hill, give you a little wave as you go. And secondly, you don't know anything about my life, yeah? You don't know how little I actually give a damn about flying through this windscreen, cutting myself to shreds. She's took the keys. Come with this plan together, did you, eh? No, none of this is a plan. This is just craziness. No, no, no. My wife is going crazy. Worrying that Adam's going to end up getting killed. This was going to fix that. Now, you just let her off the hook. I haven't done anything. This has got nothing to do with me. What, so, what, what your mum's just trying to get back in your good books or something? No, trust me, it'd take a lot more than that. Right, ring her and tell her to come back here. Adam's life depends on it, and I'm not exaggerating. Maura's really worried about him. Oh, get you and your concern for people. Yes, get me. It's straight to voicemail. What is she doing? So come on then, tell us about this horrible life of yours that makes you want to go through the windscreen. Oh, do you care? No, I don't believe you either. That was my eldest kid back there, you know. I've got two kids and they both hate me. My ten-year-old don't want to live with me and she'll barely speak to me. I could go into the wires, but you might get bored. We don't want that, do we? <laughs> You're gonna get us killed. Well, I did say I might. So anyway, before the big fallout, I actually thought my sister-in-law was gonna kill me. And do you know what? I was wrong, it was my husband. Pesticide bottle of wine. And then when that didn't work, he tried drowning me. And then he disappeared, which is really handy for him because, well, we kind of burnt a house down for insurance money. So I'm about this deep in about 50 different kinds of trouble. Sounds like the kind of stuff I get out of all the time. Oh, well, good for you. That guy back there, he's family as well, kind of. I've got a really big family, you need to know that. But you know what? Not a single one of them would pee on me right now if I was on fire. So I've got some big time making up to do. So this seemed like the perfect opportunity. It's not going to matter if you're dead in a ditch. Nothing will matter if I am dead in a ditch. So you see, it's kind of win-win for me. Literally, I've got nothing left to lose. <sighs> Take a picture. You know you want to. Oh, and yet, and somehow I'm able to resist. You sure you're okay with all this heavy lifting? Well, I grew up on a farm, didn't I? I didn't bother with it much, though, did you? Couldn't stand the excitement. Couldn't stand the hard work, more like. What? Feeding a few animals? Driving some sheep to up market? <laughs> Mind numbing. Suits your fiance. Oh, I'm sure he'll be devastated, you think that. Oh, no, I'm sure he's untouchable now he's found a way of luring you back. I didn't need luring, thank you. No, I bet you jumped at the chance, actually. Disasters you've had. What, with coppers trying to burn you to death and your ten-minute marriage to that Declan one, you'd be ready for a bit of dull and stupid. You seem to know an awful lot about me, Robert. I'm obsessed with you, Katie. I always have been. Is one possibility. The other is that my sister lives here and I find out things despite not being remotely interested in whether you're even alive or dead. Yeah, well, I'm glad you live here as well now. Yeah? So it's going to be very interesting to see how long it takes before you let your sugar mummy down with your wandering ways. Oh, I've got no need to wander. Well, it hasn't stopped you before. I got tempted before. Oh, and Chrissy's changed you, has she? No. There's just nothing remotely tempting around here these days. And, uh, boo! and here comes the elephant. Boop, boop. Bo, 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 bo. Looking suspiciously like the giraffe that you just did. I'm sorry, I'm not a professional puppeteer, Jimmy. I'd have taken a course if I'd known that I was going to end up spending the afternoon here trying to pacify a baby that you've had with a stranger mm. while you hide in fear of my daughter. He won't take this. Stick it in your own mouth, then. Oh. What did you used to do when Angelica was crying? Pretend to work. Go home. But Nicola... Yes, yeah, she probably will notice, and then you will have to sit down and talk. Oh. Well, short of getting Pearl to pretend he's hers, can you see any other alternative? Do you know what, Robert? I actually thought that you might have changed. But you're still the massive... You always were. Whereas I never think about you at all. So... The Andy thing isn't a joke. Wow. You know, we don't all treat people like you, Robert. No, you're an angel. 
I never put it about as bad as you did. No, you just settled forever as near enough to chuck your knickers out from the Woolpack doorway. So I'm going to chuck my fist right into your face in a minute. Save that for your husband to be. I've only likes a bit of fisticuffs with his women. He's well over that, Robert. It shows what kind of person you are to even bring that up. But you know what? Forget this. Put that down. No, I said I'd help and I am doing. Sorry, am I interrupting something? Only me leaving. The horses are staying where they are. I won't bring any poor animal anywhere near his poisonous attitude. I'm sorry if I messed you around. No, don't worry. Stop the car! Stop the car! Just stop the car, will you? I did not know that that led through to here, did you? I'll end it, OK? I'll tell him to stop. You know where we're close to now, don't you? I'll call him now if you've got a phone. That big drop. So listen to this. Temper hard man back there. His wife's first husband went over that drop in a Land Rover. He did not end well for him. Are you listening? Yeah, you're going to call your lad, yeah? I've said, haven't I? You have, yeah, but the thing is, it's so easy to make a phone call, isn't it? You ring him up and you tell him to stop it. And then he does. And then I drop you back at home and then you ring him back and you go, yeah, you know that? Well, carry on, only carry on and do it harder. I won't, I swear. I know that, but I don't trust you. Because you, you're just a bucket of scum, aren't you? You just filth. Watch it, sweetheart. I could put things right, though. I could fix things, make my kids proud at least. I think the best way of sorting this out is if someone has a word in your lad's ear when he's out on compassionately for your funeral. You know, tell him that's what you get when you mess with the wrong bloke. It will be you next if you carry on. Hey, what's your favourite film? What? I don't know. I don't have one. Do you know what mine is? Thelma and Louise, have you seen it? I'll tell you what I want. I want Adam Barton to take another kick in, you know. Because I want the excuse to come round to yours and do some real damage, yeah? <sighs> Make you wish you had gone headfirst over that drop tonight, yeah? <sighs> now go on, run along. Literally! If Lawrence suggests another company assimilation day, can we agree to tell him to stick it? Well, I love sitting with you in a stuffy office. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hi, yeah. Cheek on that one. <laughs> Still, at least we got done early. What's your excuse for not working? Well, the kids are on holiday, so I thought I'd take a day off. Right, uh, you do know that's not a kid, yeah? Well, what this is, is me not blowing a fuse. You know, uh, Angel's up at ours carving pumpkins for the party tonight. Oh. Yeah. How's it looking? Yeah, really good. Yeah, yeah. So's Arthur's and Gabby's, according to Marlon. But April's, and again, I'm quoting Marlon, is just a little bit better. Well, he's going to say that, isn't he? Not if he cared what Arthur's face looked like. I mean, he's going to start thinking we're two separate families. What, over a pumpkin? It's like Marlon can't bear April experiencing the slightest disappointment. I get where he's coming from, but... Not really a long-term plan, is it? It will pass, I hope. Mm. Life is complicated, isn't it? Mm. Makes me glad mine's so simple. Hey, do you fancy a cheeky glass of afternoon wine back at ours? I'm not even going to pretend I'm persuading. <laughs> Come on, Smelly. No wean in my house. Hazard is that? Been there all day. Something else to be narky about. I'll tell it like it is, that's all. Well, let me do the same, Doug. Ever since we left here, all you've done is alternate between sarcasm, silence and mourning. Add to that, you turned up late, looking like you'd come straight from felt in a roof. It's pretty obvious you're not interested in pursuing this. And after today, neither am I. It's like you're a different person all of a sudden. And one I don't care for at all. Diane? Right, you push, I'll stay. You can push and stay at the same time. I know. 
Have you not fixed it then? Yeah, I just feel like the exercise. Come on. Yeah, I probably should. I sort of owe you one, really. Um, you might want to check the petrol tank. Oh, of course. Brilliant idea, Mr. Mechanic. Look, Ross, I don't mean that it's empty, Mr. Sarcastic. Anyway, look, right, I don't really know how to tell you this. No, this is my home now. Diane, please. Do you want me, me to bar you? No, but I probably deserve it. I haven't gone off pursuing this thing, but I was worried you might. I have. I told you. I've always been a flowers and chocolates man. Holding doors open and complimenting ladies on how they look, but it's a long time since I did any courting and I'm not sure what's expected anymore. I didn't want you to go off me, so I took some advice and I've been acting on it. Who the hell did you go to for the sort of advice you've been following? Jeremy Clarkson? Rodney. The only worst person in Britain? Look, I'm really sorry. Can we give it another go? We can. If you do me a favour. Come on, sweetheart. Come on. Come on. I mean, it's not as if I want April unhappy. No, you just want all the kids treating alike, and it's fair enough. Oh, hi, still chillaxing, I see. Yeah, hi, uh. Hi, Laurel. Hi. Don't mind me, I'm just here for the wine. <laughs> okay. How was the course? Oh, it wasn't a course. It was, look how clever Lawrence is with Andy and Sam. It's boring on about six different levels. Uh, do you want a drink as well? No, no, I'll get it. Just sit here, sit here. Oh, it's all right. I'm on my feet. Oh, red or white? Uh, no, I think I'll pass. What? You're here now? Yeah, um, but I think I, I better go. Yeah, yeah, I'll catch you later, Nick. Come on. Uh. Nico, baby Carl's here. Yay! <laughs> Juliet just dumped him. What should I have done? Listen to me when I said this isn't good for us. I didn't say don't see him, but I did say that I didn't want him. Staying here, interfering with our lives, I know. But he is part of my life. He's part of me. I really didn't have a choice, Jimmy, but... we talked about this. Yeah. And I thought that'd work, theoretically. But this is what happens when the theory gets tested. Where's Julian? She's coming in the morning. He's staying the night. He is not. He can't exactly check into the B&B. &B. He can if you go with him. Right, I'm going to call Laurel. Tell her to keep Angelica at death. I wouldn't kill her to see him. No, but I'll kill you. If I have to keep him separate from our lives, it'll affect us more than if I don't. I'll have to be off with him sometimes when we could be together. The way we talked about it, everyone suffers. You've been sat here all day planning on what you were going to say, have you? No, I've been running round in mortal fear of you. Isn't there... A bit of you that thinks it'd be good for Angel to get to know her baby brother. You mean like even a tiny little part? Yeah. Any. No, there isn't. Nice timing, Carl. Early finish, make the most of it. Yeah, good idea. Thirsty work, is it, moving your horses? Well, I haven't moved them. And I won't be doing. I've just got a bad taste in my mouth, that's all. Right, well, you look pretty grimy, though. What have you been doing? Just stealing with trash. Well, do you want me to run your bath? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I don't need to get in it with me. It's all about making money, though, these days, isn't it? With kids as well as companies. I mean, come trick-or-treating. The look on my face if you don't give them at least a quid. I was happy with a bit of bonfire toffee. And do you know what one of our neighbours had? A Halloween tree. Hello, Rodney. Hey, Doug. 
Nice afternoon. Lovely, thanks. I've had worse. I think a Halloween tree sounds nice. Well, you would say that. Set you in front of anything sparkly, you're happy for hours. You silly woman. How is he? Sleeping now. You're amazing. Thank you. I remembered a travel car. I didn't end famine. He likes you. Really snuggled in. <laughs> He's a baby. They're idiots. He'd snuggle a hand grenade. You're being too modest. No. What I'm being is very clear that this is not us extending our family. Anyway, he already has a mother. A mother who's happy for him to come? Yeah, and who has more say in it than I do. Did you honestly think I'd be up for this? No, not really. There's no harm in hoping. I'll go give him a kiss. Bottle of your dearest champagne, please. I didn't have you down as the type. I'm not, but he's buying, aren't you? I've only got 20 quid. Well, 20 quid's worth of whatever, then. Two bottles, please, don't. And what am I? <sighs> Three bottles, sorry, Dan. I'll have another when you're ready, please, Janet. Right you are. Really? Yeah, come on, give me both barrels. Uh, same again, Doug? Not if you pull it like the last one. There's nothing wrong with the way I pull a pint. I've never seen you pull a pint. There's only ever three quarters in it, the size of edge you get. I'm sorry, I'll really try with this one. Yeah, well, you get it right, otherwise I won't be drinking it and you'll be wearing it. You rattled old munter. Hey, you apologise to Diane. What's the matter with you? I think he's had some bad advice about how to treat women. Ah, yeah, look, I was merely trying to school him in the ways of... The way things were when people lived in caves. You can go back to being Doug again. Oh, thank you. And I'm sorry. Forgiven. See how it works? Uh, you should not have done this without me. It would have stopped me. Well, if I did, it's because I thought you'd make it worse. You've been stopped anyway. Woo! Well, I gotta say, it first shifts your car when you really put it to the test. Where the hell have you been? Make me a brew, will you? Where's Maxine? Uh, I honestly don't know. Pay it, did you? Couldn't do enough for me, actually. Yeah, I've tried to help you. You know, you are staying in my house. Yeah, I'm well aware of that. So why did you do it? To pay you back. Pay you back? What are you talking about? Doesn't matter how many chances you get, does okay, it? All you ever think really about is just really good idea. Why don't you stop shouting and start listening? Sit down, both of you. OK, I take your point on the stairs. I do think it would improve the flow, but if you're scared of a bit of dirt, then... I think I've just proved that I'm not, haven't I? I mean, the stables, look at the state of me. Yeah. I expected you to do better than that with your love experience among the hay bales. Is this you saying that I do it to animals because I grew up in the country? Because <laughs> that's Andy. <laughs> I meant humans. I read a very interesting article in a magazine today. All the names were changed to protect the not remotely innocent. I've no idea what the correct response to that is. Mm. No. Written by Kerry from the salon, based on facts she gleaned from the locals. About a wedding and a shotgun-toting brother. I told you about that. Told me some, which was more than you said about Nicola. It was a long time ago. Doesn't change the fact that I'm learning about you from third parties. I don't like that. So, this is your last chance. Is there anything else that I need to know? Nothing. I'm all laid bare now. You didn't need me to help Kate to clean up. Of course I did. I needed a strong, powerful man. So have I passed your little test? I don't know what you mean. I'm gonna have to watch you, aren't I? Yes, you are. Yeah. yeah. 
otherwise, things like this might happen. So she definitely said it was going to stop now? Yes. I'd say maybe 15 times. I was sorting it. Oh, come on, Kane. She'd have sat in that container till you got fed up. They wear that sort of thing like a badge of honour, them sort, don't they? Who's to say she won't do the same with this? Me. Because I saw her face, Moira. I heard her voice. She was pleading for her life, OK? She was begging for me to stop. So now we just wait and hope. Well, wasn't that going to be the case doing it his way anyway? It's over, Moira. Sounds like it is. Either that or it's going to get a whole lot worse. I hope you're right. I am right. I believe you. What are you going to do then? Send a group text out to everyone letting them know I'm back in the good books? Yeah, I'm right on that. Good. Well, you might want to lobby the word hero. You know, just saying, just a suggestion. I'll bear it in mind. Oi. Holly Willoughby dishes out the emotion. If you missed last night's surprise, surprise, you can see it now on ITV Player. Tonight at nine, our historical drama, The Great Fire, continues. Thomas searches for Sarah as the flames engulf the city. Next, though, a Dalmatian with itchy feet keeps escaping. Paul O'Grady for the love of dogs. <laughs>